Hey, this is Captain Eddie. You may believe this or not. Did a video. Yeah, stick around. Here it comes. <laughs> Hey, I'm Captain Nettie Castellan. Honestly, I'm in the shop right now. I got something to show you. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna believe it. I'm in the shop. All you gotta do right now, right, is watch. Hey, I've been gone for a while. Yeah, going where? I went and got a sandwich. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, we're gonna do some turning, right? We're back in the shop again. A couple of months ago, Ronnie and I got together and did a piece on 3408 Super Glue, and that's one coat, it's finished. And the deal was, the folks at Worldwide Wood Turners all asked, can we do one on regular CA? I said, sure, I learned it probably 10 years ago at SWAT, which is coming up. But yeah, we can do it. So I got a piece of sapelline. It's about 14 inches across, and an inch and a quarter thick. i make a little platter out of it. To hold it now, I don't want to give up any thickness. I glued a glue block on the back of it, and the glue block is sitting on a mortise, which means about a quarter inch band on the face of this where I have an epoxy that. Why? Because I have to get it off. And like I said, I don't want to get up in the material. So I'm chuck it up. Go take a look at it. It's chucked up back on the face plate, and that's got a 33 millimeter bolt in it for uh, for support. Now I could bring up my tailstock and I should bring up my tailstock, but you won't be able to see anything if I do because I don't have a good camera location for this. So we're going to start here, rough it in. I'm wearing my shield. Power up, see shield? Not up here, it'll be down here. Because I'm not going to con you. I'm going to be ready to do this. Now, just to get it roughed in, I'll show you something. Got the speed real slow. Right? That's real, real slow because I want to explain to you what I'm doing. I want to take a gouge and do a pull cut to even this out. Now, I've already been on it one time and I evened it out a little bit. But now we're going to pull it back and then fix this edge show you how we're going to do this. With the shield down, I'm going to use a 3 8 Ellsworth type gouge. You see that? That's Ellsworth type gouge. It's a deep fluted gouge and I've got a special little grind on the back of it to relieve the bevel. I'm going to just do a pull cut. Why wouldn't I start out here and push back? Because I don't have anything to bear on. Lesson learned. Can you see that mark right there? That's where it hung up on my tool rest. Let's clean the tool rest. Keep going. I sand, I sanded off the tool rest because I had a little trash on here. Remember, I've been away from this thing for almost a year. Well, it's coming up in two years, but I'm back. Now, I've got it pulled and I've got some tears because a pull cut's not a bearing cut. It's an open blade and I'm pulling back. I could have done that with a push cut now uh, because now I'm a little bit smoother. Let me show you. You hear that? I'm smooth now. Now that I'm smooth, I want to put a finish on it, a finish cut on it. Now, there's a whole lot of ways to do this. Number one, I can go ahead and get my self-propelled sander and just sand away at it. That's sanding. Now, I can do a little bit better if I get my scraper out. This is my three-quarter inch or one inch wide Sears brand. You can't get this anymore. Brand scraper. I'm going to use this. Shields up. I 
I didn't move. I didn't move a thing because this is duller than a doorknob. Well, you're bearing with me. I sharpened this up by going over to my CBN wheel, which stands for Can't Be Nicer. And I turned it upside down. That means I put the base of the, the gouge down on a piece and did a poke of a, a sharpening, which created a burrow on that crit, critical edge right here. Now, somebody sharpened this to be a negative rake a long time ago against my wishes. I'm not giving up a quarter inch of steel. So I'm going to work with it. Shells up. Spring, spring you up. I want to show you something about this cut. You ready? I had to move my camera so you can see this. Tool rest, slick top, critical slick top. Now, I came across here just now to scrape this out. I've got 90% of the marks out of here, and I've got a few high spots so I can sand out a little bit. I can continue to scrape and get them out. We're going to keep going. Now, how did I do that? I took this scraper. I put it face up just like that. And then I kicked it up on the shoulder. And then I pulled it across. Shields up. Why did I do that? Okay, present it right here. You see the angle it's on? I can do a pull cut. I eliminated 90% 90, 90 of those gouges I had a little while ago. I can do a pull cut and make a curly Q cut out of it. I'm talking things are coming off like this. Right here. Now, if you go to somebody else's website, and they have something that's flat like this. This is just a scraper. It's just honed out a little bit differently. They will tell you to keep it flat on a tool rest and pull it across. Well, let's do just that. Oh, I really locked that down, huh? All right, I'll move it out a little bit and get onto the flat spot, right? Because it's kind of round back there. Here we go. Shields up. And it's a very sharp owned edge, and it's got a little one eighth inch bead back there. It's a little bead that's critical to get a good sharp cut. Now, up here, I'm getting a pretty good cut, but I'm still tearing a little now, more than I was a minute ago. Why? Because when I had this one on an angle, I had it on what I call a bias cut. B-I-A-S, bias cut. Uh, let's not talk about names. Shields up once again. On a bias. Look what's coming off. You see that? The scraping I, I had and the tearing I had a few minutes ago with that other scraper flat did some more tearing. Now, here's the deal. A can opener going into a piece of wood 
you know what a can opener is, like this. A can opener going in tears it up. What it has to do, tear it up. Now, a plow has got a little angled blade on it. Look at the plow. See that little angled blade? That little angle blade goes in and slices off that wood. Slices off that wood. Slices off that wood. Eliminates the tears. It gives you a better... Gives you this. Do you see it? You believe it. I have this ready for sanding now. And I'm going to do a little sanding on it just to get it ready for the CA. I'm going to remove my tool post. I always leave my tool rest where it is. It's not in my way. Um, if it's in my way, I'll slide it out. What I love about this, I treated my lathe bed, get this, over a year ago with Boeing T9 spray. Psst. That's the air, it, that's the sound effect. Psst. And treat it, my, my lathe bed is still slick. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I want to put on some sanding pads and we're going to get to work here. I want to show you the sanding. I'm using a shop made sanding disc. Not disc, holder. Let's talk about this for a second. I put my sanding pads in this shop made sanding holder. Now I make this. Then I put in a a store bought this comes from Vince's Wooden Wonders because that's where all my sanding supplies come from. A guy that really knows sanding. Then I put it in here. This has got a bushing and a bearing. The bearing is rare earth magnet. Now both of these I sell at my website. That's right. Speaking of my website, why aren't we talking about that? Okay. Speaking of my website, we are still in business at www eddycastellan.com that is right we are there yes if you need carbide cutters we're there if you need a template for doing segments we're there if you need bars for building your own tool we're there if you need a black hawk sharpening rig you know the answer we're there we have other items too check out the pages we've got a combo page and a cutter page why because i got a really cheeky website why because i'm cheap and i'm trying to make a living at this and I only make a living at this when you help me, a wood turner helping a wood turner. So go to www.eddiecastlewin.com and get the results. And that's where they are. A minute or two ago, I sanded this with, it looks like 320. And I started to tell you, well, this will work. But I'd rather not say this will work. I'd rather crank it up and start with an 80 grit. This speed is about uh, 200, but it's actually 211. Does that make a difference? Absolutely not. I'm cutting with the low corner of this and I'm moving it back and forth so I don't leave ridges. I'm taking ridges out. Now, I got off of that and I'm going to go over to, I got it here someplace, I found it. I have 180. Now, really, I should have jumped over to the 120, but it's not in the bag. Bag? Yeah, I don't have anything sorted out. Okay. Again, I'm cutting in that lower corner. You had to put a clock on it. It's, a, it's either six to seven or five to six. Don't look at the watch. It's not what I'm going by. You see? No clouding. No choking up. No clogging. <coughs> I'm step up to 240. You heard the cost because my dust elimination system is not running yet. I'll get it up today. That's 240. I want to pop into 320. I want you to notice, these are not new pads. I've been using these pads. Some pretty old. They've been in a bag for about two or three years. I'm at 3.20. I'm again at 6 to 7 o'clock. 
and the phone back and forth and working it. Now the difference is easy. Right now, as I'm standing with this, this paper is doing this. Okay, you can see it from spinning. So I am putting in a cut that goes in and over at the same time. And this is slick as can be. Now, what is the difference? If I were to take the 320 paper and just take it up here, start to change. I'm going to overwork my system. And I might may leave in grooves. And then come back and touch up if I think I hear a little swirling, touch it up with that. But the thing to do is to do the swirling cut first and then touch it up. What I'm going to, and oh yeah, by the way, protect your environment. Yeah, this is for CA glue and prostate exams. Okay. And I imagine since the COVID thing, you've seen everybody wearing these gloves. All right, I'm going to go back and adjust my speed. I have my speed a little bit under 200. Let's go. And I'm using right here. Starbine Super Thin. To apply it, I'm going to use a blue paper towel I got at Home Depot. Yeah, think about it, folks. I'm so restricted where I can go. I hadn't been at Home Depot in a year. They wouldn't know me. I went in. A little pad of blue paper towel. About a third of a roll sliced off. Run it through the bandsaw. And then fold it up. And I can get a pretty good bit of mileage out of this. I'll put a little CIA on it. I'm going to apply it. Did you see that? That was one pass. Not back and forth. That was one pass. Why? It was drying that fast. Okay, that's how fast it dried. Or cured. I gotta stop saying dry, it cures. Now I walked back and forth on it a little bit because it was already a surface. Now that is one coat. It's soaked in a good bit. I'm just going to flip the cloth, the pad around a little bit. All right. Now you can count to ten if you can. Go back in. Put another coat on. Now I've got three coats of CA on there. Three coats. And I'm already developing a sheen, and it's slick as can be, but it's not ready. I only wasted about a minute, okay? I'm going to go back to it. i got a piece of 400 paper right here. I'm just going to do that. Light passes. Why? Because there's going to be a little bit of fuzz. There was a little fuzz. Now it's laid back down. Now we have it laid back down, and go back into... Putting more CA on. That's one. Two. Three. Now the guy I learned this from, a guy named Trout, he was at Waco a couple of years ago, shows me now he would spray an accelerant on it to help cure it up. But I really believe in Louisiana we have whether you can cut, slice it off. So I'm not going to put any C any accelerator. I'm going to let it just like that. I got it on my hands. It's on the tips of my glove. I felt a little warmth from the pad because it does react to moisture that's in the pad. And now it's cured. Or curing. This is the piece I'm talking about. That's got six coats of CA. I'm trying to get where you can see, see the reflection off of it. Yeah. At six coats. Now I'm going to keep playing with this. When I do, 
ink pens for freedom pens, which I still collect. Um, I would use maybe nine or 12 coats and then buff it. No steel wool, okay? If you're gonna have something mild to buff it with, yeah, I'm trying to get to it. It's right here. There it is. I will go with one of these Scotch Bright type things. This is yellow, but I, I actually go to the to the mile, which is white, and I just crank it up, buff it off a little bit, and that'll make it. In case somebody checks, a baby butt smooth. It's they got a lot of sheen. So Torrance is coming out. It's a beautiful finish. It's not difficult to do. And you can do anybody's super thin super glue. I prefer Starbond because they're really nice people. And you can get it on the internet. Now, if you're looking for variations in the theme, you can use other brands. I said that. But don't go to a thicker product. If you think, well, I need six coats of thin, maybe two coats of medium. Uh-uh. It's in a curing process. Remember, it doesn't dry. It cures. So that pass, you count to 10 if you only need to count to 10. Another pass, count to 10. You get really good at this. And then one more pass. Let it rest for a minute or two. Buff it off with some 400 paper, some 600 paper, just to get the fuzz off. Now, I just took the fuzz off of this, and it's pretty good. Now, if it's a finished piece, I'd probably buff it off again and put a couple more pieces. But I'm getting ready to change this. Yeah, that's right. Oh, they got one piece of this. Oh, no, I got two. But I want to change this one. I'll show you how we do it right here. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I'm in the shop. See the shop? It's a total freaking wreck. Termites got to the counters, and they've sunk. The water came up just last week. It was six, eight inches deep in here. Yeah, Louisiana, great drainage. Um, so, shop needs a lot of cleaning and touching. We'll get around to it. We will. The goal is going every day and take a bunch out. <sighs> you know what? I'm a little busy right now. I'm making shavings. What are you doing? See you soon. Don't forget the website. Hey, when I just said don't forget the website, I'm talking about Worldwide Woodturners. Yeah, WorldwideWoodturners.org. That's a club made up of people from all over the world, hence the Worldwide Woodturners thing. We've got members from almost every continent, and they're all there turning wood, making shavings, talking about it, sharing ideas and tips and tricks and hints. And you can be part of that. We meet every single Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock. Well, we're supposed to meet at 7, but that got out of hand. We meet at 6 o'clock Central Time, and if you'd like to be part of it, go to the website. Here's the address right here, worldwidewoodturners.org. And you'll find the link to our, our show, and you'll also see a clock next to tell when the show's going to happen. And it is, get this, it's free. I want to see you there. Come on, get out there and have a little fun making shavings.